right, so um, this is just a quick overview of the downtown uh, holiday garland decorations, kind of how we got to where we are right now, um, kind of some of the background uh, and history. So back in 2016, uh, there was a fire on the roof of the now Kemsky's building. Uh, so then at the time, the city manager hosted a meeting uh, stating that, that the safety and liability issues need to be addressed uh, for the garland at that time. Uh, in 2017, uh, liability was still not addressed at that point, but seven garlands were hung uh, regardless. Then in July of 2018, um, it was determined that the city owns the lights. Um, the city, city manager at the time brought up that the structural integrity of the buildings uh, is up to the owner to fix, and the city, pr city manager proposed not to move forward unless easements were in place. So then September 2018 rolls around. Uh, the city manager got in contact with two engineering firms to see the cost of doing an assessment study. At the time, the approximate uh, assessment study was $100,000. Uh, at that time, at that meeting, um, the CEO of the chamber said they would talk to the business owners to discuss alternatives. Coming back in October, a one-year easement was put into place. Fast forward again to 2019. Um, so in the first meeting in May, um, this item was tabled uh, as not enough information was provided at the time. Uh, the second meeting, there was a presentation by CARA. Um, council wanted the item to come back at the first meeting in June so they can make a decision. So in June, uh, I provided a cost breakdown of the Garland as it pertains to downtown. Um, the recommend and recommended another one-year easement so we would have Christmas decorations uh, in 2019. Uh, the council authorized the eas easement and to explore different decorations. Oh. Okay, we're missing, missing a slide. Um, so, So looking back at the cost breakdown for um, the Garland, uh, we were looking potentially at 22 to 26 buildings. So 22 would be 11, 11 strands of Garland. Um, there were four buildings thrown in there. Uh, additionally, just in case some owners didn't want the Garland on their building anymore. At the time, it was between uh, four to $5,000 per building uh, to do the assessment study. So at 26 uh, buildings, you're looking at 104 to about $130,000 for the assessment study. Um, the next piece of the equation was we needed to get new cables, um, and that would roughly be between five, would be about $5,000, and there'd be 11 to 13 <coughs> cables needed, so that'd be an additional 55 to $65,000. And even after the study was done, um, there is also still an issue with if a building did need to be corrected, who's going to pay for that? Uh, some of the initial estimates were upward of $50,000 to reconstruct uh, some of those anchor points. Um, and so I was tasked with looking <coughs> at different alternatives. Um, so I looked at the city of Litchfield that was brought up a couple times. Um, and before you see some pictures of the wood poles, they are bending. And one of them that you really can't see too well is there's a sign that's perpendicular to the road. And a pole is coming out at about, I don't know, about 30 degrees off of that. So the weight of the garland is literally bowing those poles and pulling them down. Um, the city of Litchfield also doesn't recommend using wooden poles. Um, so then I looked at the city of Albert Lee. Um, so back in 2013, they had the same issues that we were having with uh, anchor points and some of the anchor points ripped out of the buildings. So they had um, decided they needed to go in a different direction. So back in 2013, they paid $15,000 per pole. Um, and then based on a 5% increase each year, we would roughly be looking at $21,000 a pole. Um, I personally feel it's probably going to be more than that um, to get the poles, uh, probably around 25 to 30, um, just because steel is at an all-time high. 
Um, the poles need a five by five pad and need to be eight feet deep um, to support the weight. We'd also need to hire an engineering firm to calculate the weight and wind load. Uh, and there is a minimum of a six month lead time for the poles for them to create. Uh, looking at the way downtown is structured now, um, I would say we need about 16 poles. So four at each intersection, uh, first north, center, first south, second south. Um, and so based on the $21,000 estimate, it'd be about $337,000 per pole. Another um, issue that we have in downtown is we have steam tunnels, so we may not even be able to put the foundation in for those blocks. Um, so that's something we would have to research and look at. Um, and so these are some of the alter alternative decorations that I was looking at. Um, so again, wrapping the trees uh, on each intersection to light up those corners and bring attention. So as you're driving down Broadway, you can see the intersections lit up um, and draw people down to Minnesota Street. Um, wrapping uh, the light poles um, that have the globes on them with wreaths, bows, and lights on those as well. And then potentially doing um, Christmas globe uh, decorations. Um, again, those are the 36 inch ones. I think those are going to be too big. So we'd probably do the 24 inch globes um, looking forward. Um, and so those are kind of some of the, the ideas moving forward if we don't move forward with the garland. And to me, I think the garland, if we're looking at doing polls, that's a kind of a two year outlook to do, get the studies, do everything. Uh, and we need to do something in the meantime anyway. So that's kind of where we are right now. Thank you, Chris. Anybody have any questions? Any, any, any questions before? No, so for all 16 poles, okay. it'd be 337. Sorry, all 16. Know. Yeah, there you go. So yeah, that's and that's at the 21,000. Again, I think it's going to be the poles are going to be more than that, but kind of a rough, rough place to start. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Is that just doing the intersections then? That's just the intersections. So. And if you could, could you please go back and give those numbers again as far as what your breakdown is? Um. There was a four to five thousand and a hundred. Oh yeah. To so. So if we were going to go back and do the assessment study for the buildings, um, at the time it was four to five thousand dollars, and we were looking at doing potentially twenty-six buildings, and then the new cables that we'd need to get cables and connectors would roughly be five thousand dollars, and that would we'd only need to uh, to get eleven to thirteen of those, depending on how many buildings um, strings we needed, and then there still is the cost, the potential cost to rehab those buildings, uh, the connection points, and some of the initial estimates were up to $50,000. And can I ask who gave you those estimates? Those were done by an engineering firm that uh, the previous city manager had uh, talked to, and I can't find any of the emails or uh, documentation on, on which firms he, he contacted, but they were engineering firms that he, he reached out to. So they're attached to, it'd, it'd be a, another pole on the other side of the street. Oh, okay. Yeah. So those are the poles that they, that they got in. Yeah. <coughs> and so um, the thing with Albert Lee is they actually had to get two sets of poles because the first poles that they got were engineered incorrectly and even as metal poles, they bent. Uh, and so they ended up getting a second set uh, engineered um, structurally better. And do we know the weight of the garlands and the, I mean, who determines uh, that would be, the um, velocity or how much weight is incurred with the wind? And that would be Bolton and Mink. We'd have to hire an engineering firm to calculate that, that load for us. And then we'd send that to the manufacturer to see if they can build poles to fit those specifications. So that also determines the, the cost of the pole too, because um, I'm, probably make the assumption based on the picture of the garland that we hang is probably heavier than what they're hanging. Um, do you have a cost estimate on the alternative suggestions? 
Currently, no. Um, depending on when we order the decorations, there is a discount um, if we er order them earlier mm -hmm. in the year. So if we probably ordered them by summertime, we'd get a substantial discount compared to ordering them, <coughs> in, you know, October, November. But you don't, you never have a ballpark figure. Not off the top of my head, no. So, yeah, so the the reason that I'm pr um, looking at doing around the globes uh, would be synthetic garland, uh, and then the banner poles that have no lights on them, uh, we would actually get real garland wreaths to put on those. Um, so again, you're probably not going to see them at night, but they'll be there um, during the day uh, because there's no electricity to those poles. I don't know. Do you have an idea about what it would cost to get electricity to those banner poles? That would actually, we'd have to tear up the sidewalk to run conduit to those poles. So all the other poles um, that we have, we're actually just going to mount uh, with um, a little outlet on the top. Uh, so it's really just the cost of labor uh, for the PUC to put that up. You two are serv serving the numbers talking about what it would take to replace what we have with, which is going to allow people to relax and mm -hmm. work because uh, they're beautiful. And um, you also talked about uh, a little bit about the building owners, and certainly that's a, a big issue. Um, have, have people, have you organized any kind of meetings with the building owners to talk to them and see you know, what, how we feel about it? And if, if worst case, What do you feel the cost would be going, going high and then to do engineering and, and cables and repairs and just, I mean, I know it's a bit, little bit of a guess, but. Yeah, so I know we did seven garland this year and we technically should have only done about five, four to five of them because uh, some building owners uh, actually didn't sign the easement agreement um, and we just put them up anyway. <coughs> uh, and so. I think it's a dwindling trend as the liability, it's more the liability issue, who's responsible for if something happens. Um, and so when we look at uh, the buildings downtown, um, you know, like I said, you're probably looking at anywhere, let's go anywhere between 10 to 50,000 for repairing the anchor point uh, just in general. So what that was 14 buildings at, you know, that five, you know, ten thousand a pop is one hundred and forty thousand that, you know, building owners would have to come up with to repair that anchor point, you know, and then on the high end you're looking at almost a million dollars um, that a building owner. And again, is that worth putting in fifty thousand for your building when your building's only worth one hundred and eighty, two hundred thousand, and you're probably not going to recoup that cost for six weeks of decorations? I don't know. Some building owners may not want to go that route. You know, there's one other item I want to add into this. A lot of people are talking about all these initial assessments. And believe me, I've been talking to a lot of people about these garlands downtown. One of the items that hasn't come up is, and I've talked to numerous engineers at seminars and whatnot, how often should we do this in New Orleans aging downtown? Most of them recommend it every five years. Uh, assessment. assessment. We redo it again. These parapets are 130, 40, 50 years old. They fall down on their own in New Orleans. I just wanted to add that in. It's a cost that's not going to go away. One more and then we'll turn it over to public comment. So if we came up with a cost of 500000 quarter to quarter of a million, uh, 
could, would there be time or could we look at a, a community, an individual fundraiser, and a combination of grants like legacy grants, mm -hmm. large legacy to get home to $200,000? So, again, I, I wouldn't be opposed to that because, um, again, we're not here to get rid of the tradition. It's just in its current state, it's not safe. Um, and so if there was private fundraising to do something like that to help the business owners, you know, look at something like that, I don't think we as the council would be opposed to private funding for, for the garland and stuff. But, again, I can't speak for everyone. And maybe one of you can comment or a couple comments on that. I don't think there's time for private funding even for this year we have to come out with a new plan we can't we aren't going to continue what we're already doing because we don't have the consent of the business owners so we're definitely going to have to make a change right now but I'm not saying we can't go back to it with private funds but it's going to take a lot of private funds because as the speech we had before this our reserves aren't capable of handling too much more. We're going to be spending a lot for our renewed projects and I don't think we have any extra money laying around. You know, and I'm going to come up front with it. I'm going to be the Grinch that stole Christmas. I said this a year ago. 22 to 24 garlands used to be on Main Street. We're now down to seven in the Christmas city. Maybe it's time for the change. A lot of people I've talked to, can't we do other options? We're a Christmas city, we have seven garlands and a Christmas tree out in front of City Hall. We used to decorate Broadway. I saw pictures, I remember it as a kid. People are telling me, why can't we decorate a park? My good daughter takes her kids to Sleepy Eye and Sibley Park, thinking outside the box, or are we just that stuck on garland? We'll spend $500,000 on seven garland. I just don't think that's a wise use of money. That's my personal opinion. All right. Open it up. We'll open it up to the public at this time. And uh, anybody else wants to get the name on here, we still can. But we have eight people on here right now, and I'll probably butcher some of the names. But Bonnie Weber is the first one. Just step up to the mic. Yvonne Weber, 10 South Washington. Uh, I'm here to speak on behalf of keeping the garlands in whatever form we can reasonably, reasonably do. Um, I do understand the safety and the cost concerns and uh, recognize that we probably cannot return to a point where we had uh, the garlands as I remember them as a child. But since we have been designated as the city of charm and tradition, and we have been designated as the Christmas city. I just don't feel that we can let the garlands go and still feel that we can claim those titles. Um, so if we need to scale down to some number, uh, let's do what we can to save at least some garlands. Um, if it would be uh, one garland booking, book ending either end of downtown, if we could do a few more in between. Um, these decorations are attractive, but they scream anywhere USA. They do not say Nuom at all. So um, if we could have a, a smaller number of gardens, per, garlands, perhaps it could be filled in in between um, with more of the star and bell ornaments that we currently have in the center of the garlands, the stars and bells in their wreath. Perhaps we could use some of those to hung, um, be hung um, in whatever way would be feasible on the light posts, um, just to keep that, and, and also to keep real garlands as much as possible. That's what sets us apart from other places where everything is artificial. Um, so to look for a compromise between what we remember from our childhoods and, and what we can reasonably do now, um, whether that be with uh, some private fundraising, grants, um, city money, whatever combination of that we can do. Um, I would also like just to speak to the idea of decorating in a park. While I'm not against that, that niche has been taken. Mankato does a great job. Sleepy Eye does a great job. Why would we want to copy what other places nearby are doing? We need to have our own unique um, system of decorations. Thank you. Thank you. Heather Hammer.
Good evening. My name is Heather Hammer. And my business is at 15 South Broadway. I own Eda Zinnia Floral and Gifts, and I just want to thank you for putting this um, on the work session. Um, my ultimate goal is that you put together a committee of interested citizens and business owners to do the actual due diligence this topic deserves. Well, maybe one person has done it, the entire community has no idea. Um, with more than 3,500 signatures on a petition that we put together in the end of November, that's 20% of the population that has feelings towards it. I think we can agree that we're not going to go back to 25 garlands, but maybe there's a way to do it differently. And so we want to make sure that all our options are looked at. Um, my s when we put the petition out myself, and my staff heard many times how shocked people were that the garlands was going to be discontinued. The general public has no idea. Um, and we want to make sure that all people are heard because we're rep you're representing your citizens, not your personal opinions. So, and I'm actually here to actually talk about the actual cost of the garlands because people are very confused about that as well. Um, to be transparent, my parents' business is Hacker Street Farm and they've been providing the garland for nearly 30 years. This year there were seven garlands that totaled $1,652. The same order to a traditional um, company that my parents have been servicing in Chicago for 25 years. That cost for those items would have been $2,973. So they're not in it to get rich on this project. They were, they've always been honored to be a small part of making New Alm the Christmas city. As a business owner and supporter of all things local, I feel it's vital to keep a, some sort of tradition going. Um, my personal store, we do 30% of our business in November and December. So I need to get as many people into this town for whatever reason to shop in my store and all the other stores. Um, it's vital for us to being successful. Um, I think some of these pictures, it, that is not what's going to bring people to town. So um, just want to thank you again for your time and we would, I would love to be a part of a committee that's put together to do the due diligence. And while maybe we had a quote in 2016 that was going to be $100,000, there's nothing to back that up. You know, what really are those numbers? What really could we do? We're happy doing the intersections and not the buildings if that's what has to happen. But we just want to make sure we look at all options. So thank you. Thank you. Ann Winnegar. I too want to <coughs> express my gratitude in you guys and gals offering this time for us to present our views. I firmly believe in this town. Um, I have grown up here um, in rural St. George. My family, my children are now married and grown and this is central location for New Ulm. After we met with Councillor Schultz, um, to have him help us get to this point um, in the, at the Shell's boardroom. Um, my brother and sister-in-law came home and I just said, well, we had just come from this meeting and we're trying to save the garlands. And my brother is a 1968 graduate from New Ulm High School along with Mr. Marty here. Um, and he wrote this letter that I felt very apparent um, that we hear from someone who comes home who spends a lot of time out in the world, but who comes home to here to spend a lot of money. Um, he was a 72 Bachelor of Arts degree in Duluth. He served 42 years in the United States Air Force and the National Guard, retired as a Major General. He served for 30 years as a Boeing captain for the United Airlines, so I value his opinions. He is proud to call this town home, and more importantly, his comment to me was, I can't believe that you, as German descendants, would not find the determination and the way to keep your German heritage. Um, and I quote, the downtown Garlands engineer your hometown pride. This is a significant factor in the sense of a well-being entrusted and enjoyed by the citizens of your community that I am proud to call home. This sense of well-being engenders many benefits to the community, benefits like volunteerism and tourism. 
I quote a direct quote from the University of Minnesota Extension Service about hometown pride. Experts agree that hometown pride is a critical factor in the development and improvement of any community. Residents with this type of community pride, as very evident here this evening, are more likely to speak <clears throat> positively about their town, their community, to the others surrounding in their world. They are volunteers, they develop organizations and activities that support the common good of the entire town. We know many factors contribute to, contribute to this hometown pride that we so are proud of. Examples of these factors are our festivals, our strong ethnic heritage, distinctive cuisine, charming locally owned businesses, a unifying architectural style and unique seasonal decorations. All these factors work together to distinguish New Walm apart from any other community endearing hometown pride and fostering tourism at its finest. Those downtown garlands are one of the alluring attractions that make New Walm unique. Please strive to keep your downtown garlands. Sincerely, Lieutenant Captain Greg Schwab. I personally never moved away as Greg did. Um, as I said, my family, this is home now, along with my business partner, partners, Jackie and Cindy. We have invested a ton of time, a ton of money into our, our Sewing Seeds Quilt Company. And I, along with many of the other small business owners, um, business owners and groups here know the meaning of this. And no offense to Mr. Dalton, I know what you have in your vision is beautiful, but it is not New Walm. And I agree with Heather, I will stand forward. I don't have time to invest any more than any one of these other business owners who are A, trying to stay afloat, and B, trying to do the very best we can for our town and for our business, but I too would look at every avenue possible. We are certainly not standing here before you to saying that we're right and you're wrong. That is not the point of this workshop. Um, but what we are asking is that you please give us all the avenues and the ability to look at, to see that we have exhausted every possibility before we move on. Maybe we can limp along another year or two with our easements, um, if that be what it take. But I stand before you and ask for this time to explore all avenues. Respectfully, Ann Winninger, thank you. Thank you. Alexander. Um, first of all, thanks so much uh, for holding this meeting. It's nice to see everybody here and so involved. Um, Alexander Roth, I'm fifth generation uh, New Ulmer. Um, also, in a bit of an Auslander myself, I lived on the West Coast and lived in Asia and in Germany for quite a while. Uh, great visuals, I like that. And I was looking, I thought, well, from New York City, is that 6th Avenue, 46th Street, something like that? And then I looked again and realized that it wasn't. It was probably somewhere else. Um, um, <clears throat> So it's gonna sound a little bit like I'm going off on a tangent because I don't wanna bore anybody. I thought, how do we get them to listen to what I wanna say? And you're supposed to have visuals, that's what I heard. So I wanted to get some garland and I went down the basement and I pulled it out and it was smashed and I pulled it and there were spider webs and I thought, oh, well, I'm not putting this on my head. Um, <laughs> and then I looked at this spider web and I remembered the story about the spider web of this, that spiders will build this um, this spider web, and this is where it sounds like I'm going a little crazy, I'm not, follow me. And there's this one strand, and this strand is really strong. And then I started thinking about the garland. We have to make sure that's really strong. You all know that, that's really important. That's safety, that's um, the well-being, it's finances, things like that that I don't maybe know as much about. Those are really, that's really, really important. That's the how of it. The what is the garland. However, I don't really think we're here for the what. We're actually here for the why. And the why is what the garland stands for, which is the second strand. So the spider has this web, and it goes off. But it's really that one strand. That one strand of the garland, I believe, I don't know why I feel this. I feel like it's the tipping point. We've seen so much lost here. 
Her uh, excuse me, Heritage Fest, Pink's, J.C. Penney's, recently um, George's Ballroom. I'm praying for the 1.5 bill because I'll do that too. So, um, but that last strand, that strand is our authenticity. It's our integrity. If we call ourselves the city of charm and tradition, then as Jason Pine says, it's an experiential economy. We're here for the experience. I hate to say it, that's kind of what we're selling. That's what we're presenting. I also believe that it's more than that. I believe that we're bringing, I hate the word nostalgia, we're bringing um, this idea of camaraderie. The Dutch stole Huga from us, we call it Gemütlichkeit. I believe that's what we're selling. If we say that we are the ch city of charm, and tradition, then we should be that. And I, I get the, I get the, the um, specifics of it, but in New York City, I heard so many specifics about why that High Line wasn't gonna work. Oh my God, it's gonna cost so much, it's gonna, and it costs double as what they thought it was, and it's brought in five times the amount of wealth back in. I think that's what people are wanting here, that's what we're selling. Like everybody else, I'm not suggesting that we put up the 24 garland again. I don't think it's possible, unfortunately. If we could do it, great. But I really want to thank the council in advance for really taking a good look and using all avenues so that we don't get rid of something that's really very important, and that is our integrity. It's our authenticity. It's the thing that makes us unique. As much as I like these, and I lived with these for a long time. They're lovely. They aren't who we are in our way of charm and especially tradition. Thank you. Thank you. Ann Vogel? We have to identify ourselves. I'm Ann Vogel from 516 South State Street, and I've been around, I guess I figured out it's fourth generation, so that makes you somebody who's from here. And, uh, <laughs> close, close enough, close enough. <laughs> so there you are. Um, so I'm familiar with the community quite a bit, and um, the roots I have go down pretty deep, and I've also had a lot of friends that have lived other places. And I agree that this community has a, a unique essence to it, and I also love uh, new ideas. So city, charm, tradition, but I say, but immigrati aus, which means keep going forward and bringing new creativity to what we have. And if it means that we take a really hard look, and I love hearing the fact that people are willing to do some due diligence, because that's what it's going to take, because there's lots of creativity in this room and out in the community, and you don't allow that to come into the conversation unless you give them permission. And I think they'll be very willing. Because what I have found is that there are a lot of can-do people here. And I also hear that there are things that are changing downtown, and I'm very aware of that. And I also know there are lots of people that are kind of under the radar right now, trying feverishly to bring something really good to New Orleans so it can continue, not for us, but for the ones that are going to follow us. There are lots of young people, and they have children, and you want them to be instilled with, with the feeling of something really genuine and worth pursuing and being proud of that you come from this place. It isn't just the people who were born and raised here. It's the people who come here that we want them to feel very welcomed and be a part of it so they can experience and build on what's here already. Because the future <laughs> is not going to be built just by the people who are going to pass by and pass on and pass out and actually die. It's the ones that are going to be left behind. They always say, somebody passed. I said, why don't you just say the truth? They died. <laughs> And the history that they leave behind, if it's worthwhile, will be something that everybody will want to embrace. And you want to invite them to be part of that. There's lots of creativity in this community. Just look at what's going on with performance. It's not only performing arts. It's music, voice. I mean, they talk about STEM. Well, we talk about STEAM. That's what I talk about. That's science, tr technology, engineering, math, and art. Some people are separating that, but that's what makes a community vibrant. And because of what I've done with most of my life, I'm very interested in the well-being of individuals. And the well-being of individuals is not only how healthy you are 
or how you take care of yourself when you're chronically ill and can like, be optimize your health, it's also what you do with your mind and your imagination. So I think this is a great opportunity, and I'm looking forward to people coming forward and doing the due diligence, because there are a lot of hard workers around here. The work ethic is um, remarkable. And a lot of people who came from the land and the farmers, if you talk to some of these big CEOs, and if they happen to say, I was raised on a farm, and they did all this kind of thing, all of a sudden you have kind of a, a special feeling about those people because they know what hard work is and they're willing to put their shoulder to the wheel and get things done. And the last thing I'll say is that I was fortunate to go to Chris Kindlemart in Munich. My sister and my <laughs> niece, they dragged me there and said, you know, you're not gonna just keep working here. You're gonna come over there and see that. That is a very German tradition. And they have it reproduced in St. Paul <laughs> at the Union Depot. And I happen to know the woman who organized that whole place. And she's actually trying to get the Bachmann <laughs> floral people to get involved with some of the evergreens. Well, we have some evergreen people right here, and we can do something that's gonna have the same thing with the outdoor Christmas mart. Yes, we can't have glue vine on the street because you know we have a lot of cold weather, and over in Munich I found out that they actually can be walking around in very light clothing, and they don't have this bitter cold, but we also know how to survive in the cold weather. Just look at where you are from the last couple of days. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Thank you. And now Marty. My name is Danielle Marty. I'm the co-owner of Gallery 512 Boutique, and we own the building at 20 North Minnesota Street. Um, I'm a proud uh, descendant of five or six generations, and I'm also a junior pioneer, which I'm quite proud of as well. Um, so clearly the Garland has a personal, I have a personal vested interest, but I also have one a vested interest as a business owner as well. Um, and uh, like Doc Ann had said, that there are young people in this town who are very uh, passionate about this town, but we also have children and we have generations that we want to carry on these traditions that have been provided to us that are unique and cannot be uh, duplicated when it's um, a brand and it's authenticity. Um, that we're selling. People come to New Orleans because we have something unique that you can't recreate. But our town is under threat in the sense that there are other towns that are doing unique things. And what is our vision for New Orleans? We're working hard as business owners to keep our downtown alive. And we're working hard to bring um, commerce into town. But things like the Garland, it is kind of a tipping point. Where are we going with our, with our uh, vision of what we're doing here. We, we've been very comfortable in New Orleans because people have often come to us for retail, but there are a lot of towns around us that are doing great things as well. Um, and so my sister and I, we hear from people all the time, town, all the time who come into our store who are traveling from uh, many different cities for Lola's and their um, pot pie or the flowers downtown in the summer or the garland, and the garland is a big thing. People come to New Orleans to shop, but they also come to see our garland, and it brings, it brings business to town. Um, and so I just wanted to end with a letter from my sister. My sister is Michelle Fisher-Cartier, and she moved to Duluth about 20, 20 years ago. And she said, even though I've since moved away, my heart is still very much New Orleans. Living in Duluth for the past 20 years, anytime someone asks where I'm from, and I mention New Orleans, there's an instant connection to charm and tradition. The city is very well known throughout the state for this, and I've heard it countless times. In an era where life seems to be speeding ahead at an alarming rate, this is the time to hold on and celebrate these honored traditions. I understand that there are financial considerations, but I wanted to share an outside perspective. I am so proud of my hometown, and to continue to keep the city close to my heart is important to me. Thank you, counselors, for your time and consideration. Warmly, Michelle Fisher-Cartier. And I would also like to thank you all for your time and time and consideration and Teles Schultz for meeting with us. We really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Marty. Uh, my name is Kyle Marty. Uh, I work at the August Shell Brewing Company. Um, I'm here speaking as a pro Garland person. First and foremost, I want to thank you, uh, Manager Dalton, for the work that you've put into this. Obviously, you are in a very tough spot. Um, so I appreciate the work that you've already put in. I also want to acknowledge the Councillor Christian and your stance on being responsible with the funding. I think that is important and I will um, be right by your side in terms of we're only spending money on what we should be spending it on. 
Uh, there are a, a, a couple things that are synonymous with New Ulm. Uh, Polka, Herman the German, Jim Sensky coaching New Ulm baseball, Shell's beer, uh, Christmas garlands, and what you're seeing today is some stubbornness, German stubbornness at that. Uh, as the council is aware, uh, there's an obvious emotional outpouring that goes with these garlands. Uh, we have 2,604 electronic signatures, another 903 here on paper. So uh, obviously the, the, the emotional support is there. But I think that uh, it's important to balance the emotional support with the financial uh, resources that we do have. Um, I think it's, uh, it's very telling that the business owners here in town can talk to individual events that they've personally experienced where people do come to town uh, specifically for this. And I think that you, you can't ignore those things. Um, but I also come from an organization where you can't really just complain without having a solution. So I'm not sure if I can offer a solution or not, if that's a viable thing here or not. But I, I do have a proposal that I would like to present. Um, and it would be in setting up a Garland subcommittee of seven individuals, five citizens from the community, as well as two pro-Garland uh, counselors here. Um, the, the, counselor, the group would be charged with reviewing the findings of the original engineering report. Uh, second would be to research, identify, and uh, reach out to potential engineering firms for either pro bono work or, or um, um, just on a percentage uh, to give uh, them an opportunity to, to look at the uh, solutions downtown. Uh, that group would then be charged to provide the council with three decorating opportunities or decor plans, uh, complete with a cost analysis, budgeting options, and implementation plan uh, over the, a couple of years to provide uh, funding for it. And last is develop and follow an agreed upon timeline to explore the facts uh, and options while at the same time work to put a solution in place. Uh, the idea behind the personnel, five people obviously from the city would to provide kind of a, a, a depth of ideas and uh, analysis there and two people from the council to provide kind of a sounding board to the citizens that may not understand the financial requirements and resources that the city does have. Um, at the end of the day though, people love the Garland. Um, so, uh, after all this research, the, the results may not change, but I think given the opportunity that the people can at least have a piece of it and own that, I think would be uh, appreciated by, the, count, by the, the city. So with that, I thank you again for your time. I yield my time. Thank you. Jody Marty. <clears throat> Getting the Marty trifecta today. <laughs> um, I'm Jody Marty, and I'm here representing Shellsbury and also the Small Business Owners Group. And I'm also here to express the thoughts that we hear from the thousands of visitors that come to New Ulm. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the council for allowing us to come and visit with you on regards to this and uh, expressing concerns for and looking at other options. I'd also like to thank Les for meeting with us and talking about this um, earlier. Um, the, it never seems to amaze me that the thousands of people that come to New Ulm and comment about how beautiful the city is and the, the city of charm and tradition and how important that is. And there's so many other small towns that try to mimic us. And we're the real deal. And it would be really a shame to me to see something, though it's very nice, that's really not us. Um, the garlands have been something that's been here for a long time. The visitors notice them. Sometimes I think when you live here, you take it for granted and you don't think that it's that important. As uh, they have outlined to you before, that the hundreds of people that have signed the petition, it does mean a lot to the residents of the town. There is a, a strong feeling of, of maintaining that. Um, I know you have to move forward, but sometimes you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater so to say, to get a new look. And if you have a tradition that people really feel is important, look at that again. I'm asking that, um, I know that you cannot hang the garlands from the building. I wanna thank all the business owners that did take the time, the, accepted the liability and did that again this year and in the years past because it has been a huge liability for them. And I don't think the public really knows that. Um, I know we can't do it that way anymore, but I would like to see us look at other ways that it can be done. Think outside the box. The brewery has to think outside the box all the time. When you have that old of a building, we know what it's like when things have to be repaired and you just can't keep doing the same old thing. I know there are steam tunnels. Why can't we look at the steam tunnels and if you need five feet of concrete, can't you do a, a pillar in the tunnels that maybe aren't used for much 
that you need that much space anymore. Support the poles down there. That would give you the leverage if that's what's needed for the sway with the wind and whatever. But I, I keep hearing about the steam tunnels, and I think maybe they could work to an advantage if we would look at that. I just ask that before we throw the whole idea away, look outside the box and see if there's other wing ways we can do it. And I do understand that you can't put them back on the buildings anymore. It just doesn't work. Um, I did hear the results from the last report. No, we can't do that. But again, please look at other options before we just walk away and say, nope, can't do it. Um, I ask for the council to be very transparent in what they come up with as, as far as moving forward from here. I think that the, the public has spoken quite loudly as far as what they feel is important. And I feel that uh, this tradition is one that the residents want to hang on to one way or another. I'm not saying you shouldn't look at something new or a, a little twist on it, but don't throw them away because it's the one thing that is real and New Alm is the real deal. Um, I know that it may take several years to come up with this and be able to pay for this, and um, I think New Alm is worth taking the time and the energy to do it right. I know the downtowns are fading all over America, but ours is on a resurgent, and I think we need to do everything we can to support these business owners, and I think this is a big part of it. So um, thank you for your time. Just don't throw the garlands out without looking at other options and thinking outside the box. Thank you. Thank you, Jody. I guess. Sure. Just name and address. Yeah, Elroy Ubel, 510 South State. Um, this may seem a little odd coming from me, but I want to give you a little history lesson. <laughs> <laughs> really? Really? <laughs> I, I wonder, I mean, everyone knows, I think, when the Chris McGarland tradition started. Anyone know? 39. 1933. And prior to that, what do you think the New Alm Christmas tradition was? <coughs> there had to be something prior to 1933 that we did. Was that the tree that they had in Center Street? Christmas or? trees along Minnesota Street started in 1925. They had 110 foot tall Christmas trees lining Minnesota Street from 1925 to 1933 when the garlands started. And I think if the garlands are pushed aside I think maybe we should continue with a prior tradition that fits New Alm. And of course, the Christmas trees fit New Alm because of the German tradition. Prior to 1925, the very first Christmas tradition was 1914 when they put up the first municipal Christmas tree. <coughs> After that, the Christmas trees lined Minnesota Street. I just think if we eliminate the garland, we, we, we're chipping away, and I've said this before, we're chipping away at New Alms personality. We're, we're losing something. The personality, I think, in New Alm is being chipped away a little by little by little, uh, which is not good. Um, but if we have to chip away the garlands, let's go back to something that fits our tradition that we had in the past. And I think the Christmas trees would be an answer. Thank you. Thank you. I guess I'd like to thank everybody for their comments and concerns and everything else. I don't think there's one person up here on the council that's against the garland. I think we'd all love to see it, but we need a plan is what we need. And the comment uh, Heather made and Kyle made, I guess I'd be willing to support putting a committee together. I think it really needs to have a little more talk, but <coughs> I don't know what we're going to do in the interim because I don't know how fast we can move along with a committee. You don't want to rush something and get something you really don't want. You need to put time and energy into it, and it might take 
six months, it might take a year, but we won't be able to do anything for this coming year without maybe having that same committee come up with something interim, you know. So we, we do have money to set aside. I, like I said, I don't think anybody wants to lose the garden in its entirety, you know. Like he already says, tree is something. They would have a green or something, but if somebody's willing to sit on the committee and we get the people together and take some time and give it a good consideration. Charlie, I wanted to. Oh, I wanted to make a couple of comments. I know we, we have a lot of passion here tonight with keeping the garland, and I haven't seen that many signatures on a petition since what? People remember, save Chammy the horse. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> serious. I mean, you, there was like three thousand yeah. signatures to save Chammy the horse. And I was the Grinch on that one too. <laughs> And it kind of started that way. It was like, this is an, against an ordinance, and the horse has got to go, and, and <coughs> that's what was going to happen until people intervened, and, and they got a petition going, and, and we all came up with an alternative idea from the chamber, or the council here deciding to uh, come up with a different plan that allowed Chammy to remain in, in the community. And um, So I, I think of that passion, and I, and I think there's a compromise here. I do, I think there's a way to, you know, a lot of you said, I think, that we can't go back to 27 strands or 26 strands. I think we can. And let me tell you why. I just think that there's, you can't do it overnight. You can't do it in one year. But could there be a 10-year plan? Could there be a 15-year plan to bring these back little by little? Um, we have $50,000 in the budget this year to buy new bulbs. Um, or could it be used for to moving on with this project and get it started? Um, in the transition, can we get a couple more years of our business owners to keep the garland that we do have current? Um, yeah, it might be only seven strands. My understanding, there could have been uh, a little more, um, but there was construction on the Friends and Bank or something like that. So there could have been back to the eight. Um, yeah, it's going to take some, uh, some committee work to take. A, I think the real question is that our steam tunnels and can we actually get the poles to go down that far? And, and what would an engineer tell us about what that would look like? And what would that cost? Um, but I do think we have to move away from the buildings, as most of you talked about. Our buildings are getting older. They're not getting stronger. There's some up downtown that I think even you would agree that will probably last for another couple hundred years. But then there's the other ones that aren't very good. Uh, we have so, you know a couple blocks mixed in there where there's no garland because we don't either have, don't have businesses saying yes or but how hard have we worked to get a yes from them? I don't know that we have worked that hard, I, I, and I don't know the answer to that, but could we work harder to get some more positive results for this coming year or future years? Yeah, I think we can. Um, but it's work, and it takes time. And, but it is part of the charm and tradition of our, our community. And I know, you know we don't have Joel Albrecht here, but we have his wife Rita. And if Joel was standing here, I know this is what he would say. He said, if you take away this garland, this city is just going to be another town um, of 13,000 plain and plastic. That's almost exactly what he would say, right, Rita? He would say, yes, he would. He would. Um, and he'd be chastising all of us for, for even look, thinking about this option. So I, uh, and I, so I appreciate what he would have said, and I think that's something important that we all have to think about. Um, we can make this work. We, we, we're building a gigantic water park, and we're building all this stuff in town, and we can't figure out how to save our garland? I think we can. You're on the committee. I'll be glad to be on the committee. I'll be glad to be on the committee. I also would like to be on that committee to help serve with it. And you know, and I just want to look at the bigger picture yet also with the garland. You know, I'd like to bring it back. I think we have to look at all other alternatives, whether it's poles or it's arches across, you know, to displace it, how we're gonna mount it. But uh, I think, you know, we're we've got a lot of business owners that wanna do something downtown and I think we have to look at the big picture of revitalization for the downtown, you know, and there's a lot of segments or pieces of the pie. Now, how do we tangent together and what's going to be first or what's going to be last and how we're going to fundraise it has yet to be determined. But, you know, I'm willing to serve on it and uh, to hear it out and try to keep it moving forward and uh, be positive with it. Go ahead. Cara, you've done a lot of research on this project and are you willing to step up and help because you have a lot of knowledge in this topic? Great, thank you. Yep. I have a question. Um, just because I don't think there's like a clear path. Um, so the city allocates 
55,000 this year or whatever it was and then another for next year. Um, my understanding is, because I'm on the chamber board, the chamber pays for the garlands now. How was that collaboration started or do? Uh, be before my time, I can't. Yes. So essentially the chamber, we prepare the easements. The chamber goes out to the property owners to collect the easements. Uh, and then they order the garland and we, the PUC, uh, puts in about $2,000 to help with that. And then uh, we put them up and connect them uh, to the lights. Were those new, since the fire, wasn't there new plastics encasements in those lights? Wasn't? Mm -hmm. So Yes. Okay. So they would be current and up to date. And how many strands of those are there? Do you know right offhand, sir? Not off the top of my head. No. So, but that's something that the committee can. Yeah. So we have three or four. Are there other people that'd be interested? Can't we act on it? I don't think I we, know. Can we can't act on, we on can. it. We can. I know we no. can't act yeah. on anything, but this but is where we, we want to maybe get the names. We can put it on the council agenda for the next council meeting. Yeah, we can put it on the agenda. Keep mm -hmm. moving with this, well, and we can take. We got a couple volunteers, so yeah. they can talk to Kyle and Heather and so anybody else they would like to serve on it. Actually, if you want to serve, just come up and sign another sheet. Well, let's see. Anybody else? Do we want to wrap up, or do we want anybody oh. else have comments oh. they want to mention that we haven't talked about? Kathleen? I just want to make a comment that, um, in my experience, communities, businesses invest thousands, hundreds of thousands, more than that, in branding. Yeah. And we have a brand. And I just think it would be ludicrous for us to throw it out <laughs> with the baby. <laughs> A lot of publications, we'd have to erase that picture that we have the garland. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, we truly, we have a brand, and, I, and that is the charm and tradition. Mm -hmm. And um, why go and try to reinvent ourselves and try to save ourselves when we have a brand of our Now, we also know you can't have a committee of 50 people. You'll never get anything done. So you'll have to, we'll have to figure out how many should be on this committee and how soon they need to start meeting, but we need to put that on I the agenda. We, yeah, we can yeah. put it on the next council agenda, and if we get the list here, then we can come up with a number, and you're all welcome to come back. And In the past, we've randomly picked, just because there's too many people on there, so we'll, we try and figure out a fair way to do it, so. Mm -hmm. I just I just have one comment. Um, I, I looked at all the people that have spoken, and I really appreciate their passion, and a couple of things that I took away from from it is um, keeping our keeping our authenticity and keeping us unique and not trying to copy others and I I um, really support that thinking and I think that there is a lot of young people out there now stepping up to work on these issues and to um, put in the time and the work and I I think that we as a council need to um, foster that and and let that grow um, so I, I do support um, this idea of a committee and um, working together to find a solution. And I do think that we can, we'll find something that, that will carry on our tradition. Yeah, go ahead, Tim. Yeah, I'm just, um, I know that the buildings are in tough shape, but they're gonna need to be repaired at some point. And I think there are, there are, fun, are Grants to repair or renovate the building, and I'm sure that every building owner ought to be concerned because whether you have garland hanging on there or not, I mean, I've driven by water flowers, have seen <laughs> pieces of brick fall down onto the sidewalk. Yeah. Uh, one way or the other, they got to get fixed, and I would prefer that they got fixed the right way in the authentic way as opposed to chop off the top of it and make it just flat mm -hmm. concrete and then lose another little bit of the wall. So I think by working maybe through that side of it, some sort of re renovation funds or uh, grants. I know the state had its small cities, I think had grants available. I, I don't know what they all are. There's more than one way to skin a cat. Certainly, yeah. certainly something that city can be looking into. And I think Dave Snowbrook snuck out of the room, but he could be 
um, looking into some grants for us as well. Or Mr. Nisley. Yeah, I'll just make one comment on the small cities grants. So small city grants are great. Um, you know, and there's probably other grant opportunities out there, but small city ones in particular, um, the strings that are attached to those um, are kind of too great for depending on what you want to do. Um, again, it's mostly geared towards low income. So if you remodel the outside, you have to have some low income component into that, which makes renting your spaces a little bit more difficult. Um, so, I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to having, you know, Dave or John look into some, some grant opportunities. But I will take the time right now to say we do have a facade improvement program currently available that's, I would say, widely underutilized um, as of right now. But, um, you know, if you know b building owners that are looking to renovate, it's a good program. Just have them give me a call and we can get them get, um, the information they need. Jody? I guess I didn't know there was such a thing. And mm -hmm. if possible, could you get that information out to the general yep. public? Because I, I didn't know that was available. And that's uh, something that if it's not utilized, that's really a shame. Um, one thing I do want to say in regards to the buildings, when you look at them, and, and we water flowers, so you have a lot of time to look at the structures and everything. Not every building downtown is a two-story building. So as far as even attaching it to the building, that's not always feasible yep. to get the look that you're wanting to have. So that's where the whole separate or whatever separate from the building could be the better option if you want a more uniform look, if the Garland idea is something that could be continued. It's just that you've got buildings that go like this all the way downtown, mm -hmm. and you can't always support Garland from, mm -hmm. from the shorter building. Yep. Oh, go ahead. A uh, couple of things. Uh, yesterday, I was in, up in Norwood, Young America. We were do this town days broadcast, and I happened to be in Norwood yesterday. <coughs> we talked about the small business grant that you were referring to, and they got a pretty good chunk of money uh, for that. So it could be an avenue, uh, and I think that would be interesting to look at. Um, secondly, from your local radio station standpoint, we'd sure like to see the, the great holiday tradition continue that we've had, a lot of discussion of what and why. Uh, I can only say I will, I, I pledge our communication effort to help get that out there. Even if there's some additional uh, Save the Garland fundraiser that happens to come about and we need some on-air push, we'll donate that time from our end. I think it's important for our community moving ahead if we at all can, I've been here on 45 years and you, know, you kind of just assume it's gonna be there, but it is what makes us unique. So if we can do that, would be great. We'll be behind that and just understand that it's there. And I think that small business thing you talked about, I know they got a pretty good chunk of money up in Oregon America for that very same thing. Mm -hmm. And they're very excited about it. So Thank thanks you. for mentioning that, thanks. Anybody else? In the council, so I'll put that on the agenda for next um, agenda, next council okay. meeting. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Thank you, Comments, all for coming. Yes, very much.